And that this is what we should really be seeking. How can we become beloved to Allah? How can we become beloved and mentioned in the Mal al-A'la? And if you notice, is that we have different times that we ask for this. And this to me is one of the most amazing du'as of the Prophet ﷺ, and all of them are amazing. Is that when you eat at someone's house, eating is one of the most mundane things that we do. But what is the recommended du'a that we say? That as if someone fed you at their home. Is that, that the righteous have eaten your food, that made the angels that mention you in their prayers, that is, that seek forgiveness for you. And then, may you be mentioned to those who are in the presence. May Allah mention you to those that are in His presence. SubhanAllah, we're eating. Yeah, I mean, someone gave you food and you're making the dua that he or she be mentioned in the Divine Presence. To those that are in His presence, subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is an amazing thing if you're aware of that when you're reciting it. And if Allah answers that du'a, and if that actually happens, that this is a, a very, uh, very good thing. And what is the result? This is the whole goal of life. Is that what? Is that such that they witnessed Him in everything by means of the eye of inner sight. That if you attain this in life, you've attained everything. You will be the richest and wealthiest of people. That if we are blinded and we are distanced from these meanings, even if we have all of the dunya in the world ten times over, is that we are the poorest and most needy of people. That this is what life is all about. And that anyone who is presenting an understanding of the deen of Islam that doesn't confirm this meaning, my honest, this friendly, brotherly advice to you is to distance yourself from those people and don't have anything to do with them. You can be friends with them still, but don't take deen from them. This is deen. This is deen. And what's always so amazing to me is that some of our brothers and sisters who that oftentimes are really causing problems in terms of our reputation that on a worldwide scale is that they are the first people to not only criticize this meaning, but if you ask them, have you ever sat with people, who sat with people with an unbroken chain back to the Prophet so that have actualized this meaning, and almost across the board, the common thread and all this, you'll find no. You'll find that it didn't happen. And that this is why that, that when we take deen, that we take our deen from reliable sources. We take our deen from people who are trustworthy, who live up to the amana and the trust of learning knowledge from living sources. And I remember one time that I was at a talk, and um, as soon as I was done, it was a short talk, this individual rushed up to the front, and that he didn't like one of the hadith that I quoted, that there was weakness in it. And that he said, that, look at this, and he showed me on his phone, he said, this hadith is weak. Right, on his phone. And um, I said, okay. I said, what are the conditions of a weak hadith? Of quoting a weak hadith? And, you know, he didn't know. I said, have you studied hadith? He said, yes. No, I said, have you studied mustalah hadith? The signs of hadith. Then he kind of squirmed, and I obviously realized that he hadn't really. And I said, the conditions for quoting a weak hadith are three. A, B, C, boom, boom, boom. Here they are. This to me fits that those criterion, and he just was at, no brother, look, you can't quote that, look. He had no idea website, what website he was even on, and who was the person validating and saying this hadith was or that, that this is the type of understanding that people have. And one of the great examples was that one of the teachers of Amul Tarif, that Sayyidina Sheikh Muhammad Sayyid Ramadan al-Bulti, who that is Shaheed, and that uh, there was some person that thought that he was drawing near to Allah Ta'ala by that blowing himself up in a gathering of Muslims in the masjid. I don't know what this person was thinking, but it was a cause for him to die a shaheed. While he's teaching in that same masjid that he'd been in for how many years, teaching, teaching, Amu Tariq's brother, Rahimahullah, died shaheed with him in the gathering. And Shaykh Muhammad Sayyid Ramadan Abulti was one of the great, great Imams of our time who many of us are still benefiting, will benefit for generations and generations and centuries after, and the legacy 
that he left behind, that radiallahu ta'ala anhu wa'arullah. And one of the things that he was giving a public class one time, and someone questioned him publicly about a particular hadith. And so then he said that, what is, your, what is the chain of the hadith? So the shaykh then went on to mention that so-and-so narrated from so-and-so who narrated from so-and-so who narrated from so-and-so. And then the person said, Jazakallah khair, thank you, and sat down. And then the shaykh then said that you all just wittered, witnessed utter ignorance. And then I, I named him my tailor, my butcher, my local grocer. And he mentioned just all of these names of people that he knew. And the person thought that, oh, he's given me his proof now. Oh boy, if you don't even understand what a proof is, what is a proof going to do for you? Right? You give them the chain of the hadith, they don't even know what a chain is. They haven't spent the time learning the narrators. What is that going to? It's as Imam Ali said. Is that the worst enemies of the people of knowledge are the ignorant. At least if they're scholarly people, that they're not going to that contradict sound scholarship. But if you're dealing with a person who just doesn't know, no. Right? What you, like in order to have an intelligent conversation based upon knowledge, that there have to be some talking points that are agreed upon, that are somehow that based upon knowledge. Anyhow, this is what it's all about. Is that the ayn al-basira. You have the basa, which is your physical eye. And you have the basira, which is your inner eye. And your, your heart has an eye. Your heart can see. And your heart can hear. Your heart can see. And your heart can hear. And that this is a higher type of sight. Because it sees that which the eye can't see and it hears that which the ear that can't hear. And that this is the fruit. And so then, that <laughs> These are hearts that are not veiled by anything. And then, <laughs> And as a result of this, is that they had saintly miracles that suspended customary experience appear on their hands. May God make benefit manifest through them. Amen. And that we don't seek that miracles to happen on our hand. But Allah Ta'ala does give this to His righteous. And the fact that there are miracles on the righteous is affirmed by the Quran. We have to believe in what is known as a karama. This is a saintly miracle. If you don't like the word saint, some, for some people that conjures up an image of a, that for converts that was kind of a Christian type thing, that you can just think of that uh, it's basically a breaking of the norm that Allah brings on the hand of someone righteous. And that the Quran tells us about the story of Solomon, where that one of the jinn said to him that he could bring him the throne of the Queen of Sheba before he stands up from where he was sitting. <coughs> And then the one who is given knowledge of the book says, I will bring it to you before the blink of an eye. And then, this is what he did. When he saw it, that right before him, that he brought near Palestine, all the way to northern Yemen, a throne, who can carry a throne, to him instantaneously. And this is a miracle. When Sayyidina Tamariam, when she was under the date palm tree that gave him birth to the Prophet Jesus. And that this is why that, that oftentimes that they say that it's very good for many pregnant mothers to that eat dates. It actually helps them uh, with the pregnancy for the most part, but you have to look at your own condition, of course. And Allah says, That Allah commanded Sayyidina Maryam to shake the date palm. And that then there will then fall that fresh, right dates for you. That anyone, that you could take five grown, strong men to shake a date palm, and there's no dates going to fall, right? They have special people, I've seen dates be harvested, that are master tree climbers, and they wear a belt, and they put it on the back, and they inch their way up the tree, and they get to the top, and they have a knife, and they cut the cluster, and then they come, like, it's, you know, it's not an easy thing to do. You have to be trained. You have to know what you're doing. And that, that way that the dates are attached to the, 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 the vine is, is you're not going to get any dates fall. You're not going to be able to shake the tree hard enough. Uh, anyhow, uh, this is said to the Miriam while she's at her weakest point giving birth, that shaking the tree and then Allah causing dates to fall. This was clearly, and she's not a prophet, that she's uh, a, a, a righteous woman. 
So we have to believe in this. Now, that we might not have experienced these things, but it doesn't mean that they don't exist. And that we hope, though, that there is a type of miracle, though, that Allah Ta'ala blesses normal people with. And it's one of the seven types of the breaking of the norms, if we categorize them theologically speaking, it's what's known as a ma'una. A ma'una is a type of divine assistance that Allah gives someone. So that you could have, for instance, a mother that is in a very perilous con situation and that might do something that's it's just out of, the, out of the norm and um, a, 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 as a result. Or that Allah Ta'ala blesses someone with something that's s miraculous to an extent, even though they're not necessarily known to be a very, very righteous person.